it. So, well, um, your estimation whether there will be in near future the opportunity for the Lebanon to return back to this uh, uh, this uh, high level position in the Arab and Middle East uh, well, uh, uh, role. Uh, it's interesting. Also, we would like to for you to give uh, some hints whether your uh, famous uh, future team project uh, uh, will gain some momentum in the near future. And also, uh, and also, well, it will be if it will be possible, you could give us uh, your uh, your attitude to, to the role our country could play in the Middle East uh, in the in the well uh, obtaining of the uh, of the new momentum of the of the uh, peace process. Uh, yesterday we had in Moscow a very interesting meeting uh, in which uh, there was taken the decision that uh, we should start uh, drafting the new concept of our policy as far as uh, Middle East, Africa, uh, Asia countries are concerned, uh, based on the uh, friendship and the cooperation uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, our traditions. Uh, actually, this is only the beginning of the drafting. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> so if you could give us your vision, what you are expecting uh, from from us in the future. Uh, it will be also very much uh, interesting and have also some uh, practical value because uh, I was uh, uh, there was a decision that I'm responsible for the initial drafting of this uh, of this uh, concept. So we uh, we very much happy that we have the opportunity to meet you and uh, to hear your vision of the situation in the Lebanon and in the Middle East region as, as a whole. Uh, you're welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan bi. Asakhair. Spasiba. Spasiba, Prof. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for this introduction. And uh, I have the honor. And uh, I want to thank also Murad for uh, the best cooperation to, to be together this uh, this night to, to discuss about Middle East, about Lebanon future, and to talk about uh, uh, the possibility of uh, stability of the new potential uh, with the new uh, administration in the US, Democrat, and also with a new era related to uh, the Middle East. I'm talking about what's happening in Syria. I'm talking about the situation in Iraq, what's happening in Libya and Yemen, uh, uh, what we expect related to negotiation between the American and the Iranian, and of course, the policy of Turkey toward the region and uh, the new competition related to the gas and oil in East Mediterranean basin uh, and uh, 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 the symposium uh, that Israel, Egypt, and other European country, they are uh, uh, preparing and they start to have some meetings related to the security of energy in the East Mediterranean basin, related also to support of gas and oil to uh, uh, Europe, and also what we can expect in all this region related to the, the future of terrorism, the future of the radicalism related to uh, some organization like Daesh or Al-Qaeda or other, and also to, uh, if we can say, the competition between uh, European country, US, China, and of course, uh, uh, related to Russia policy. So from this big picture, I will start to talk about what's happening now in Lebanon, related from uh, 17 of October uh, 2019, uh, the demonstration, NGOs, and other instability related to social uh, problems, related to economic problem, related to political problem, start to, to affect and to be uh, more uh, 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 implicated 
in our uh, uh, national security related to uh, uh, the national uh, uh, يعني, social security also because with coronavirus we start to see uh, also uh, uh, some clashes uh, between uh, security and army and uh, the demonstration and last uh, month we have the clashes in the uh, uh, north of Lebanon and Tripoli uh, this capital of north Lebanon uh, in Mediterranean Sea we see that before few years before to be uh, especially before 2000 uh, before two years uh, uh, we are talking about an agreement between Rosneft, Gazprom and the Lebanese authority to have tanks for fuel and gas in this city of Lebanon in the Mediterranean Sea near to the border, Syrian border. So what's happening last month in this city, it seems also uh, related to some activities with Daesh. And we see that last week in Lebanon, uh, security and army stopped hundred of person involved with the radicalism and related with the regional radicalism, like in Syria related to Daesh, Al Nusra, Al Qaeda, and they are well connected with some organization in Iraq. So in this way, I just to start to talk about the impact of the regional uh, uh, instability, terrorism, and other uh, uh, implication inside Lebanon. This is one. Two, uh, we have uh, uh, like a political problem or crisis related to the new government, a new, uh, a new uh, political balance between uh, the political parties. And of course, we are talking about involvement or some competition. Uh, uh, in four, uh, 4th of August, we have big explosion in Beirut city that destroy half of the capital in the port of Beirut. So with this explosion, after six months till now, we don't know what's happened, uh, who is involved, who has uh, uh, bring uh, this material, uh, what happened, it was a terrorist attack, it was by mistake, it was uh, related to the corruption. And of course, uh, uh, just after this explosion, we see that the Turkish uh, uh, politics arrived to Lebanon, and after it, the French president arrived to Lebanon, and we see that like uh, uh, the competition in East Mediterranean basin related to the energy, related to the competition between Turkish, Egypt, Turkish, uh, Europe start, and we see that Lebanon start to be involved in this competition. So we have the second problem related to the regional competition and the implication in Lebanon. The third one, we have to talk uh, also about the policy, the new policy of the US toward Lebanon. So with the uh, uh, administration, uh, Trump administration, we see that uh, American radical uh, ideas uh, supporting some policies like sanctions are against politicians, uh, against the parties uh, who are not involved directly, if I can say, in terrorism or activities supporting uh, terrorism. So this sanction start to be related to uh, the Syrian uh, situation that this political party or some uh, figure, political figure, uh, 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 under sanction, American sanction, because the Americans say that they are involved in supporting some company, financing through some business, uh, the economy in Syria against the sanction, put it against President Bashar al-Assad or against Syria. So in this way, also we are, we have some impact in Lebanon. Uh, number four, we can talk about also what's happening uh, related to uh, 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 some crisis, uh, governmental or political uh, uh, or competition or clashes between American and Iranian in Iraqi, in the Iraq. 
So Iraq also have some implication because also it's, uh, uh, it's a continuous policy toward Lebanon. We have some economic uh, uh, exchange. We have some political and uh, religious uh, uh, relation between Lebanon and Iraqi, uh, uh, the Shia in Iraq, and also uh, the involvement of the Kurd policy related to, uh, if I can say, uh, the new system if it will be spread in the region related to uh, federalism or a new partition for the geography and demography of the region. So uh, uh, this is also an implication. Number five, I have to say that uh, what's happening in, Lib uh, in uh, Lebanon, it's also related to what we can see uh, uh, happening now in Tunis. Tunis, it's not directly involved with a, uh, a trouble, but also we can say that Tunis is a hub. So when we can see a problem between Algeria and Morocco, when we see implication of uh, uh, the Libyan crisis uh, related to the Egyptian policy in Libya or a competition between Libya, Emirates, France, and Qatar against Qatar and Turkish, we can see that this implication can, can also uh, uh, have some implication or uh, 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 some of this uh, policy can affect Lebanon. Uh, number six, we have to say that uh, 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 related to the system, political system in Lebanon, we can see that uh, some corruption related between corruption, uh, 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 political parties, uh, political figure, and also the regional crisis from Libya, from Algeria, we talk about some uh, uh, illegal, illegal business, money laundering, and also the involvement of the central bank uh, related to the currency, Lebanese currency, to the uh, US dollar sanction related to the dollar. And also we can say that Americans through some Arab country uh, start to affect the stability of the economy in Lebanon and to affect some politician related to Hezbollah or related to, uh, if I can say, uh, uh, the new era related to uh, uh, peace process who start with the Emirate and some Arab other country related to Israel. So what we can say that in this all this preparation, I can see that the second wave of an Arab count of an Arab Spring start to be uh, uh, very fruitful in the region. So we can see that the political uh, negotiations start in Libya, but in the same time, demonstrations start in Tunis. We can see that also in uh, Iraq, they was preparing for the election in June. Now they postponed the election till October and demonstration return in Iraq related also to the corruption policy of Iraq, relation with Iran, a competition between uh, Iran and the US. We see also that we are looking for an election in Syria in few months. So who will, who will win uh, the future of President Assad? Uh, the committee related to uh, the political discussion in Geneva, they stop. Uh, so, other alternative, we can see that with a Democrat in the US, at the same time we see in Yemen, the Democrat start to promote a peace process with the US, uh, between US and Iran. But in the same time, they put the Houthi as not under the list of, terror of terrorism, as terrorist organization. But in the same days, we see that an attack uh, was against Abha, in Saudi Arabia airport. Uh, after it was a, like a clashes and the war start or restart against Ma'rib in Yemen. At the same time, we see in Iraq like an attack against Turkish army who are occupied uh, the north of Iraq related to the Kurd activities, related to other, uh, 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 let's say, uh, balance of power between Turkish and regional power. So what happened against the uh, uh, Turkish army in Sinjar also 
we have to look at it. What happened uh, also in, in Tripoli and Lebanon last week, also we have to look up about it. So in the same time, we see peace process, but we see in the same time, a, a restart of activities of clashes, of competition, military competition, and intelligence activities. With this new era, let's say, with a new administration Democrat in the US, we feel that a new support for the NGOs start to support the demonstration as promotion for democracy, change of regime of systems. But in the same time, we can see that what Clinton, Harry Clinton say that we support the terrorism, we support the Islamist organization to change the behavior of the region, to change the behavior of the Islam, as she say, I think that with President Biden now, American will support NGOs to change policies, to change regime, at the same time also supporting uh, the proxy uh, organization at the Islamist as other uh, activities what, that we can say, uh, we see it. Uh, so the clashes in Ma'rib, the clashes uh, in Sinjar in Iraq, North Iraq, clashes in Tripoli, uh, some clashes start also in uh, between Libya, Egypt, and also between Sudan and, this, and Ethiopia. It's a beginning of the new wave that I think that the new Democrat administration start to promote it uh, for the next four years at least, and to involve uh, uh, more countries. And I think the war of gas start, and this war can affect two big country in the region related to the gas. The first one, it will be Algeria and North Africa, because it's, if we can say, as I say about Egypt, about Libya war, about competition, Algeria, Morocco, we can see that Algeria can be affected because of the potential, because of the involvement, and also because of the new competition, because Americans don't want that any company like Total or any, or Russian company to involve, to be involved or to invest in gas in the East Mediterranean or in North Africa, and to uh, use this investment uh, uh, to spread the gas to Europe, as we can see that what happened in Nord Stream last few weeks, and also what happened in Ukraine and in Belarus, and also what we can see related to uh, also in Bulgaria, uh, that change of uh, the gas pipe through Turkish line and uh, uh, also about, uh, let's say, what happened in Azerbaijan with Armenia. So if I can say that the big competition is also a part of the regional competition in the region, Lebanon can give us like an indicator that the new wave of an Arab Spring will start or it start from now. And we can see a lot of these clashes in few months and years. And the war of, war, and the war of gas uh, uh, will be using this second wave of the Arab Spring for a new settlement, ge geographic settlement, demographic settlement, and at the same time, change of regimes in the region. This is why I think that American will invest in the Muslim Brotherhood uh, organization. This is why we see that in Mu'alla in uh, Saudi Arabia, it was a meeting and the reconciliation between Qatar and Saudi Arabia. This is why we can see a new competition between Iran and Iraq, uh, and sorry, between Iran and Turkish policy uh, in the region. So what happened in Ma'arib, it's a competition between the Houthi and the Muslim Brotherhood Al-Islah party. What's happened in Sinjar also, it was the first time that some rocket uh, related to Hashabi, to Shia organization that they target region of the Kurd 
and also it was like like a message and it was like a start of clashes between Kurd, uh, Turkish, uh, uh, pro proxy of Iran and Turkish. The same in uh, Lebanon, uh, North Lebanon and Tripoli, some clashes start with demonstration and maybe it can take another competition between Daesh and Hezbollah, let's say in Lebanon. So Israel will profit the competition or the clashes directly between Israel and Hezbollah, it will not be because Hezbollah, as after the war uh, in Syria, maybe we can see this internal clashes that can involve Hezbollah and keep the potential and the over uh, uh, military, uh, if I can say win, happen, that happened with the first uh, uh, Arab Spring wave. This is why I think the second Arab uh, Arab Spring wave it can be to finish bit, uh, from all the uh, uh, argument or uh, organization used to reconstruct uh, the great, if I can say great, or the new Middle East. And of course, we have to focus now on the investment related directly with the gas and oil and related with the new regime that, ha that they have to, uh, to serve the American policy related to the security of Europe, related to uh, uh, American are searching to be the only and the only pioneer uh, big power in the world. And of course, this is why Biden tried to promote the uh, uh, new relation between Europe and uh, uh, American through uh, NATO. And in this way, I can say that NATO is a part of this instability of this wave where they will invest. I think that the second after Algeria will be Iran because if it will be some clashes through proxy, it means Iran will be also under pressure related to some NGOs. We see that before a few years, it was the green revolution in Iran and why not that American they are preparing in the same time negotiation with America uh, with the Iranian but in the same time some changement with the political uh, uh, stability or social stability of Iran related to the elections coming in June so we have to expect this war which it's a proxy war it's a new wave of the Arab Spring this is how I can say, how I can uh, 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 analyze uh, uh, what we are coming in the region or what we can expect from the new policy of the US or what we can uh, see in Lebanon or uh, some other country in the region from North Africa and Algeria to the Middle Asia and Iran. For me, uh, uh, I, I finish uh, my speech. If there is some, uh, uh, sure, some questions, it will be uh, fruitful maybe also to communicate directly. Thank you so much, dear Professor Risk. Uh, it's a, as always, it's a great pleasure to see you with us. And as always, your presentation was so amazing and interesting and complex. So, dear colleagues, now we are going to switch to our question and answer session. But before we get started, I would remind that today with us is the director of Istiqarif, uh, Professor Imad Rizk. He's from Lebanon. He's the one of the prominent uh, 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 expert in political processes, not only in Lebanon, but in whole Middle East. He also a um, good friend of us and have a lot of projects with him. And one more time, thank you for your presentation. Now we switch to questions, please. If you want to ask questions, just uh, use raise your hand function and we'll provide for you an opportunity. Uh, Professor Bakalov, maybe you have some question or yes? Voice, voice. Yes, yes, it's. Try now, please, one more time. Turn on the 
No, yes. No, it's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, well, it's very interesting start of our discussion. Uh, traditionally, when we have uh, with us uh, the dean of the faculty and the horrible, honorable president of the Council uh, of Defense and International Policy, Professor Karaganov, usually he sets, sets the first question. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll follow uh, our tradition and uh, Mr. Sergei Karaganov uh, will uh, ask the first question. Uh, on these uh, subjects uh, which were covered uh, so brilliantly by the speaker. So maybe he will ask later, now we will continue. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Vera Vladimirovna is here. Uh, so as I understand, yes, she's here, but maybe we will give her uh, at the end of our discussion. Now we will start with a question. If nobody from our participants, uh, Professor Baklam, do you have any question? If not, I can ask. Uh, uh, well, um, actually, yes. Yes, uh, I would like to uh, ask a question dealing with the oil and gas. This is, uh, well, uh, uh, the issue which gives money for, for the development of the, of the country's concern. Uh, so I have two questions. First, whether Lebanon uh, is uh, content over the present day negotiations process with Israel as far as the Mediterranean uh, gas fields are concerned. In the, and uh, the second question uh, is as follows. Well, uh, actually, we see the beginning of very, very uh, tough process of the probable division of the gas, uh, uh, you know, fields uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, on the 5th of the next month in March, we'll have uh, our consultations uh, on the Middle East with the Americans. And uh, as far as I could understand, one of the questions uh, will be uh, the possibility of tranquilization, the situation in the Arab world and uh, Mediterranean as far as uh, this uh, gas question is concerned. So my, my uh, ask is uh, uh, to comment uh, on, in more details. Uh, what could we expect in the future uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in the development of this question of the uh, gas uh, fields in the Mediterranean? And is it possible uh, for uh, any uh, collective measures, uh, any form of, of uh, collective cooperation in uh, trying to settle this uh, very acute uh, problem. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for this uh, uh, very nice, very important question also. Uh, as I say, the competition Next competition, it will be related to the gas and oil in the East Mediterranean basin. So um, this is this is the big issue. But in reality, uh, we have two problems. The first problem is that the U.S. and uh, and the Congress uh, last year, October 2000, also 2019. So in the same time, with the new, as I say, the new wave of the Arab Spring start in the region and especially also in Lebanon and Tunis and Iraq they was discussing and uh, they agree democrat and uh, republican uh, about a law in uh, in the US to join the security of the east mediterranean basin with the energy so for the US the energy in east mediterranean start to be a national security for them. And, and uh, uh, after, in the same time, it was a meeting between uh, Israel, Egypt, uh, Greece, uh, and Italy, and Cyprus. So in, in this meeting, Lebanon, Turkish, and Syria is out of this meeting. But what we can see that they were talking about the pipeline 
to uh, to use uh, or this uh, investment from the east mediterranean from uh, uh, let's say tamar israeli uh, field in the east mediterranean and uh, uh, egyptian uh, field and to pipes uh, this gas to europe but also it seems that it was impossible because we see that turkish make like a agreement with Libya to stop any uh, uh, agreement between Egypt and Greece. And now we see that last month, it was maybe the 26th meeting between uh, Turkish and uh, Greece to fix some problem related to uh, the sea border. And also we know that Egypt and Greece, they don't agree about uh, a sea border between them. They just fixed some uh, two, uh, two problems related to Crete and another uh, island in uh, Greece. So also we have this, uh, let's say, uh, uh, this problem, this crisis. So now the US uh, is using uh, the public policy, their public policy, their, uh, 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 their way of sanction to arrive to fix this problem and to join the military activities, the foreign affair, and the energy minister in one, uh, uh, let's say, in one bunch. So for them, for the US policy, foreign policy of this country, especially Egypt, Israel, Greece, and uh, Cyprus is one. Foreign policy, uh, military uh, defense minister, and uh, uh, energy. And they are trying to make from uh, Cyprus the headquarter for their uh, influence in the East Mediterranean Sea. So in this way, the American policy is using or they are trying to get Lebanon also uh, to be a part from this agreement. But we know that Lebanon is in uh, two partition. One partition, it's pro or proxy with the resistance against American, against Israel, but the other, uh, uh, let's say, let's say half of the Lebanese policy or the politics or parties, they, they have some relation with the US and Europe. In this way, we see the clashes, we see the demonstration, we see that every uh, uh, part of the Lebanese party uh, try to to arrive to finalize this crisis for uh, for the benefits of uh, their policy this is why i was talking about wave of uh, the new arab spring this is why also we start negotiation indirect negotiation if i can say related to the border but it's not related with the uh, peace process with israel so we have a problem with the land border, uh, we have 14 uh, points that we have a problem with Israel between Lebanon and Israel. And now we start to have a big problem in negotiation. We make some uh, meetings through the UN and in participation with the US uh, to fix the problem of uh, the sea, sea border. But it seems we are going for a new complication. The, the complication is that Lebanon uh, uh, using, if I can say, uh, the problem, uh, the international law of sea, uh, find that we have more than 860 uh, kilometers square in, in the sea. We have more, it means we are talking about 2,200 kilometers square. This and this proposition uh, was rejected from the Israeli side. So what will happen, if I can say, is that uh, uh, there is no government in Israel. Israel is going for a new election in next few months. Netanyahu will continue, or it will be a new government, new political settlement in Israel. In Lebanon, on the other side, also, we don't have a government. Uh, we still have this problem, internal problem, that affect a... a uh, uh, to fix the internal problem, to have a new government. 
in this way, there is no opportunity to continue negotiation. And at the same time, the changement of the administration in the US. So it was with Trump that he was promoting himself that a saver for uh, Israel and for the Jews. Now with a Democrat, with Biden, maybe he, he, is, uh, 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 he, will, he will make another uh, tactics or he will have another strategy toward the negotiation or to all the settlement in the region. So Israel, the policy of Israel is fixed with a political problem inside Israel for Lebanese also government through UNIFIL negotiation also it's fixed. So we expect that all this negotiation will stop till the summer after June, it means after the election in Iran. So the new administration in the US will make, make like if, uh, if they make an evaluation, if they profit to be involved, to continue to be involved with this negotiation, because it's not a negotiation related to Lebanon and uh, Israel, it's related also to all the border, sea border, and maybe it will be, it will open a new discussion after summer with, uh, between Lebanon and Syria, because also we expect that we have the same problem of sea border uh, uh, related to the north uh, border between Lebanon and uh, Syria. So what we expect is this problem will not be solved. Israel is going to uh, uh, to have some exploration through a Greece company in Karish uh, field in the border, uh, Lebanese-Israeli border, the sea. Uh, they cannot go far away with this because uh, also security of the investment will be involved. Uh, the tension between uh, Lebanon and Israel will be uh, maybe related to the resistance in Lebanon, Hezbollah. So I think that uh, we can see some uh, clashes. Maybe we can see uh, that Israel will stop to, uh, to invest in this field in Karish because as the negotiation, less, less negotiation uh, stop, uh, Lebanon uh, have uh, the right to get, let's say, 32% of Karish field. And this is why Israel also uh, was rejecting uh, this idea and uh, uh, was promoting that uh, the deal was just for 800 kilometers square, not 2,200. So I think that the investment will be stopped. Uh, the project is under the US policy and uh, the competition with the US as we can expect, uh, Russian, they are not so uh, involved in this competition. And at the same time, uh, I see that the settlement will be till the end of this year, because also Lebanon will open a new investment for a new field in uh, uh, April or May 2022. So I think related to coronavirus, related to uh, this crisis, uh, negotiation, uh, border, I expect everything will be freeze till uh, maybe June uh, 2022. But in general, do you envisage that we are at the start of the whole era of uh, uh, seabed uh, resources conflicts uh, in the Middle East, in the Mediterranean? Is it the start of the long and very a uh, difficult uh, period to, uh, of, uh, uh, well, these attempts uh, to solve such kind of problems uh, well, in semi-military and political ways. Uh, you expect it's, it's just the start or, or, or what will be? Or uh, what are the, 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 the other phases of the development of the affairs in this uh, uh, gas problem? Through this panel, I, I was expecting a new involvement of Russian to make a balance of power in the East Mediterranean basin, because if there is no balance, we will see that uh, the proxy like Hezbollah, uh, we can see that the Turkish can go far away in this competition 
and why not to see a clashes between Egyptian and uh, Turkish? Why not to see a new settlement also related to Turkish-Israeli uh, agreement that also can affect the stability of Lebanon and Syria and can affect, in, on the other hand, uh, uh, the power or uh, uh, all the role that Russian was made to make peace in the region, in Syria, or uh, to promote the peace process between Palestinian and Israeli, or between Israel and Syria in the future. So if we cannot make balance, everything can be. And at the same time, if the Iranian will feel that they will lose a card in Lebanon or in Syria, or they feel that Turkish will be more aggressive against them related to some other field, why not to be uh, uh, maybe to, to involve the region in unstable situation? This is why I think that uh, uh, promotion of peace must be related also with the presence, with some activities, with some balance, this is why also we can see that French, they cannot have a resolution for the conflict, like, like it's, let's say in Lebanon and the region, the same also for the uh, European country. This is why we need more involvement of Russia to make uh, stability or to make balance, or we can expect clashes or unstable situation. It means no exploration, it means no business. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much. Murat, maybe we'll give the opportunity for our participants to raise their questions. Could you help us? Yes. Uh, 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 okay, thank you so much, Professor Baklanov, and thank you so much, Dr. Lise, for your comprehensive answers. But before we get uh, continue our questions answer session, I want to give floor to our uh, head of the School of Inter International Regional Studies. Faculty of World Economy and International Affairs, HC University, Professor Vera Vishnikova. Uh, Dr. Vishnikova, the floor is yours, please. Yes, thank you very much, dear guest, dear friend, Matriz, Dr. Matriz. Yes, thank you very much for joining us today again. And it was very interesting and professional from your point of view to, to, to hear your lecture and to see the situation, the current situation. Thank you to my uh, dear friends and professors, to uh, Professor Karaganov and Baklanov for joining us today. It was, it is a great uh, pleasure for us to discuss such um, difficult and such uh, uh, such difficult questions on uh, uh, during our seminar. And uh, sorry for my late. I had some problems with uh, technical, but now everything is okay and I am with us. And I heard your lecture. It was very interesting. And I have a question. Uh, could you please share your vision about the future of uh, Lebanese government? Will the Harris' uh, cabinet will cope with current political and economic crisis? What do you think about this? It's very interesting for me and for us to know your point of view. Thank you. Uh, if I can say, my, my point of view or uh, my analysis about uh, the crisis, political crisis in Lebanon, first, uh, we can talk about percentage. Let's say 25% of this crisis is internal. 75 is external, regional. So everybody knows that uh, we have three levels of this, uh, let's say, regional crisis. The first one, the competition, as I say, between Qatari and Turkish, Emirate, Egypt, and other country, uh, Saudi. So this competition, we can see it in the Sunnah region, if, if I can say, uh, the Sunnah influenced policy or politics. The second one, the Shia in Lebanon, to be honest, they are related with the policy related to Hezbollah, they, they are related to the Iranian. So I cannot, see any agreement or any settlement in Lebanon if they cannot use this card or this opportunity in Lebanon to make Iranian profit 
uh, or to give them like a card or a, a, an opportunity to negotiate with the America because stability of Lebanon, settlement, political settlement, uh, 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 balance of power between politics party is also, it's a part of consortium uh, of uh, agreement uh, as maybe years from Taif, I'm talking about 1989, between American, Syrian, between American, Saudi, and uh, Iranian. So the settlement, uh, if we have to talk about to continue this settlement, it means Lebanon is a part of the settlement, like uh, Syria, what's happening in Syria and Iraq and Yemen. So we are a part. This is why I'm talking about the competition, uh, Sunnah competition, second one, the Shia with the American. The third one, we have to be honest that also the future of uh, the policy in Lebanon, it means Lebanon in the future will be pro-US policy or a pro, if I can say, or a balance between the US policy, European policy, and the East policy. It means we have the project of Silk Road project. We have the policy of to be East. It means uh, a pro-Iraqi, Iranian, uh, that they can invest with this uh, East policy. So. With all this competition, I cannot see that any agreement can be related to Hariri or to uh, other uh, uh, people that can make the, the new government. And also relation, personal relation between Hariri and the president, it's not also related to the political affair, it's related to some business. I'm honest, I'm, I'm, I'm talking this honestly. It's a business issue. We are talking about billion of dollar of investment. Who will who will manage the future of Lebanon? It means who will manage the gas and oil feed? Who will manage the future of investment? Uh, uh, the said uh, project of investment of French investment in Lebanon or European investment or American investment related to energy, related to infrastructure, reconstruct of Lebanon. Uh, the project of Syria, we are talking about billion of Lebanon will be will host the companies to rebuild Syria. So who will lead this uh, opportunity? He will get hundreds or thousands of uh, million of dollars. So it's a business issue, not only political issue. This is why this competition, it's very hard. It's, uh, it's so complicated. And also we have the third, uh, let's say personal problem. It's related. Uh, with a, a relation between Saudi Arabia and Hariri especially, because after what happened uh, with Hariri before a few years in Saudi Arabia, his relation with Salman, with the uh, King Salman, uh, with uh, uh, Mohammed bin Naif and the other uh, uh, prince in uh, Saudi Arabia, it seems not, uh, we don't have resolution for this crisis. So he was visiting Egypt, he was uh, visiting, uh, uh, Macron, just to have this opportunity to to make through this, let's say, President Sisi, President Macron, to call the Saudi and to uh, to fix this problem. But I think till now the problem uh, still uh, the Saudi they are not agree with Hariri as representing uh, of their policies in Lebanon or to make the competition with other uh, policy. This is why I think uh, Hariri have some problem, but I think that in the future, this problem, if the regional uh, crisis will be solved or will take uh, or will, will start as indirect uh, negotiation or indirect resolution for them, I can see that uh, we can see a government because the government in Lebanon, everybody knows it's a, uh, international and regional consortium and agreement. Thank you so much for your question, and for your answer, Dr. Now I want to give through to our colleague, Michel, to raise hands. Just turn on microphone, please. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Dobre uh, Nasia Drug Murad, 
Наша друг, доктор Аймат, тоже. Я бы хотел сказать, что доктор Аймат сделал очень красивую презентацию. I agree with a lot of points, but I will. Uh, I would like to be more aggressive on the point of uh, stability, the point of uh, investment in the plot, specifically plot nine, which is on the border of Israel and uh, the mutual uh, business profits between uh, Russia and uh, French on developing uh, this plot where it exists a part of it uh, with the conflict of Israel. Uh, and I would like to share with, uh, with the presence of the professors and all uh, the attendees that uh, this part is, will make late, as Dr. Ahmad said, uh, uh, the investment in the gas and oil But there is a part that will be always on, on, uh, on uh, conflict, which I believe we need to ask our uh, Russian friends. Couldn't be under a United Nations uh, control and uh, develop the second part as uh, Israel now is, is, uh, is developing all their plots and doing money while the people in Lebanon are suffering from their social uh, situation. And Dr. Ahmad knows very well. And I think, I believe you should know very well that people are suffering from, from food, from medicine, from, uh, from a lot of uh, weaknesses of, of life. Second, uh, I, would, uh, I would be so appreciated to get an answer uh, regarding the, the development business of the Russian specific, specific uh, especially that we heard a lot about the development of uh, support of Russia uh, on the crisis of the uh, designation of the new ministry uh, by Hariri in addition to the push of uh, His Excellency uh, Mikhail Bogdanov uh, regarding the, the, the directions, or it is, it is unofficial, but to invest in, in Lebanon uh, for, uh, for some few business. Uh, so uh, why, why we are still uh, delay, delaying uh, time Uh, while we are see uh, Orthodox brothers are suffering, uh, Christians are suffering in the area, while President Putin said, I'm here for uh, such uh, uh, religious parties uh, before, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, who will be the, the small numbering in the, in the area? We are So, okay. Dr. Imad, please. Yes. The floor is yours. Uh, it was a question. It was a question, like, as I understand from our colleague chat, that the position of Russian Federation in Lebanese crisis. If Russia will intervene in resolving the crisis, if it will be with a uh, like Christian minority, as I understand, and he also said about some. Uh, unofficial information about uh, of, uh, special representative of president of Russia, uh, excellency about uh, interest of Russian companies in Lebanon. That. So maybe as, it like a position of Russia in resolving this problem. As a Lebanese. Yes, as a Lebanese. As a Lebanese, uh, I don't know uh, officially Uh, the Russian policy, but uh, <laughs> as an expert, <laughs> I can say that <laughs> uh, I try to say it. We need a balance 
with the American policy in the region. It's for the benefits of Russia, for the investment of Russia in the region, and for our uh, benefits, let's say Lebanese, Arab, uh, uh, Syrian, Iraqi, all of these people who are living in this region under, the, under let's say, first radicalism, under uh, uh, undeveloped countries, under uh, also, uh, we still living in an era of, uh, let's say, post-Soviet period. So if you can see the change in all this region, let's say the Arab Spring, let's say in Libya, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, all this country was post-Soviet when the uh, competition was between the US and Soviet. So this is why I was talking about second wave of Arab Spring, because the American, the policy of American, they want to get this country like what happened in the East Europe, like in Romania, Bulgaria, and all these 10 country in the border uh, with Russia. So if I was, if I was a Russian or decision maker or uh, analyst for the decision maker in Russia, uh, I can say I'm in Lebanon, or if I support Lebanon, the investment in Lebanon, or business or any, ex, uh, let's say, exchange between Lebanon and Russia, my policy will not be related with the minorities or with the orthodox. Uh, because I cannot see that uh, uh, President Putin have a good relation also with Netanyahu. It's not with Netanyahu, it's for the profit of Russia. So he have a good relation with President Bashar al-Assad, but at the same time, he make mediation for the future of Syria. He discussed with the opposition and he was talking about peace, about settlement, about uh, uh, investment. So he's not related to the Alawist. He have a good relation with the Iranian government, but he is not involved against Saudi. This is why we have to look really and to talk really about the real uh, 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 Russian policy in the region. Russian policy in the, in the region is not related with the minorities or it's not related with the Orthodox, as I know. Maybe a part of this policy can be related with the Orthodox, but we are talking about international policy. We are talking about settlement with the US policy. So we are talking about investment. We are talking about business. So it's not related with, with one uh, religious uh, uh, group. It's related with the liberalism of investment and liber liberalism of policy towards the business, towards the investment, and towards also the profit, the national security of Russia in the region. So Russia and the Middle East is a part of counter-terrorism. It's a part of good relation, historical good relation, cultural relation, maybe also some uh, uh, diaspora, because in Israel, there is Russian. In uh, Lebanon, there is Russian. In Syria, there is Russian. And all of them, they are Russian. They are not uh, religious minorities or religious uh, citizens. This is why we have to look to this, uh, uh, to the policy of Russia, not from the perspective of religious. We have to look in the perspective of international affair, and policies. But you know, Dr. Ahmad, uh, I'm sorry. so sorry, Michelle. I'm so sorry, we just really ran out of time. And if it's possible, maybe I know, you know, each other and it was in Lebanon, we can discuss, because we should ask only uh, one more question from our participants. I'm so sorry. Uh, Dr. Rees, thank you for your uh, answer. Uh, sometimes I want to say that not minority, like majority, maybe like Russian diaspora. So our Question from Palina Vasilenko, one of our attendees. Uh, she is interested in question about the future of political process in Lebanon. Uh, and asked, given that currently the newly elected Prime Minister Saad Hariri has lost the support of Christians in the Persian uh, of the leader of the Christian party, Ran Basir, and President Aou. Judging by the leaks in the media, do you see an alternative to his candidacy? Uh, if the formation of a cabinet under his leadership fails, as did his uh, as did this happen to the office of Adib and Diab? 
what do you think? Or I can maybe repeat. Sorry, you turn on your mic. Could you please turn on your microphone? Uh, sorry, I cannot hear the last uh, the last uh, speech. Okay. Given that currently the newly elected Prime Minister Saad Hariri has lost the support of Christians in the person of the leader of the Christian party, Gibran Basile, and President Aoun. Judging by the leaks in the media, do you see an alternative to his candidacy? If the no. Of oh. no. Okay, as, as I say, as I say, Murad, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking uh, frankly and uh, uh, open. Uh, the crisis of government, I, 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 I separate the personal related to business, to investment, to money, and uh, the regional crisis. So if the crisis in the region start to be solved, be sure that uh, Hariri, maybe he is not the best, but he can be because of his good relation with uh, Macron, with French, because of the opportunity that he, as Saad Hariri, he have the big Sunnah block in the parliament. And he still represent the power inside, let's say, Lebanon and the regional uh, uh, impact of this related to his father uh, and to uh, some other things. So as a businessman, as a good relation, historical relation, with some international topics. So this person can be, but the problem is related to business. Everybody knows that when the agreement was between uh, the minister Jobran Basile and who was representing also the big bloc of the Christian in, uh, in Lebanese parliament, when this uh, agreement was between Jobran Basile and Saad Hariri, everything was good. President uh, On was elected and we was going to prepare Cedr and to bring $22 billion for investment from European uh, investment and some Arab country. But what happened is that something happened related to this agreement and also the impact of the regional uh, complication because when the American leave uh, the nuclear uh, agreement, it was after the election of the president on in Lebanon. So with this international or regional uh, complication, I was sure that everything will be complicated. And we have to know that also it was some complication in the policy, Turkish policy toward the region, uh, uh, the clashes in Libya between Egypt and Turkish and all of this. So Turkish also want to get from the Sunnah in Lebanon, in North Lebanon, Egyptian historical relation with the Sunnah in Lebanon, like Saudi Arabia and other. So it's a real competition. Okay. So it's not related to a person, it's related to a policy. This is why I can say, and I say it, if the regional agreement will start, be sure that the internal will be solved directly because it's an issue. It's not ideological. It's related to business and money. And with money, everything can be solved. I totally agree with you. That was one of the questions from our friends. Uh, so now I think, Duplex, if you have any question, you can ask. If you not, uh, Zia, you have some question or? No? I'm sorry. Okay. No, I don't have any question. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. So uh, before uh, I will give to, to our moderator, Professor Vaklanov, I would remind you that today with us, uh, Dr. Imad Twist, he's the director of his career. He's uh, one of the prominent Asian political elements in Lebanon. Uh, so this event organized by Russian Middle East Association and the School of International Regional Studies uh, of the Faculty of World Economy and International Affairs, HSC University, within the special online project, Contemporary Area Studies. 
our uh, the head and coordinator of this project is uh, Dr. Vera Vishnu. And also today with us, and this is the special session of this project, 10 years anniversary of Arab Spring. As we all know, that it's interesting processes will return uh, to and uh, turn to chaos. Till now, we see some some really difficult situation. For example, in Libya, in Syria, in Yemen, and etc even in Lebanon, in Iraq, because the Middle East will be changed. And we, I really believe that everything will be okay. And first of all, for ordinary person, ordinary people, everything will be okay. So now I give floor to Professor Bakhmanov and Dr. Well, uh, uh, there was a question um, <clears throat> about the uh, uh, possibility of a more resolute role uh, of the Russian Federation in settling these questions. I would say that we are reluctant about that, honestly speaking. Uh, we act individually and uh, resolutely only when we uh, see uh, the visible uh, danger for our interests, like it was in Syria, for instance. So mm -hmm. it was a separate example of uh, such, uh, such a policy. In the majority of the cases, we think that the settling of the questions of the region, this is the primary preoccupation of the countries of the region. We can help them. We can give uh, certain good services, uh, we can extend our help, but uh, uh, we are not going to act uh, instead of the regional parties concerned. Also, what we are thinking now uh, about, I'll tell you frankly, and what we are going to discuss with the American colleagues on the 5th of the March, it's uh, the opportunity or the necessity or not necessity of establishing of such kind of uh, uh, multilateral uh, groupings uh, on uh, these uh, very difficult issues, including uh, gas and oil uh, disputes uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, water resources disputes uh, and some others. Well, uh, actually, we had very in interesting and uh, positive experience in the beginning of 90s. Uh, when these kind of groupings were in action. So if the regional countries would, uh, uh, would um, you know, consider this idea to be good, okay, okay, we can start moving in this direction, establishing of the bilateral uh, groupings uh, on the most vital and most uh, difficult issues of, of the uh, region. But of course, uh, we cannot move uh, individually, uh, individually. We are only one uh, of the possible sponsors of these forces, and we can act as sponsors. But no more than this, we cannot perform, of course, um, uh, miracles. Uh, Murat, uh, any other questions for the participants uh, you, you, you are handling with the this is um, no uh, ah, no we have we have some question okay. from Mr. Navruzi. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said, I just want to ask if China, Pakistan, and Afghanistan has impacts on this new competition, and you mean gas competition? Uh, uh, dear Navruzi, could you please ask a question by yourself? Turn on your microphone. Okay. Yes, now. Okay. Yeah. Because first I probably get a distance. Okay. Sorry. First of all, hello to everyone, to dear professor and to our guests. I'm uh, Nauruzi from Afghanistan. So I just uh, wanted to know that if uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and China, if they have any impact on this uh, new competition, because uh, Mr. Our guest told about the pressure on Iran, so Pakistan and Afghanistan they are the neighbors of uh, Iran, and also 
China, they have, uh, they helped uh, uh, the Pakistan government about $35 million. Uh, and I just wanted to know if, they, if uh, these countries, regional countries, it, it has compa impact in these, uh, uh, in this co competition. Thank you. Please, Dr. Risk. Yes. Uh, you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. As I was focusing on the region and Middle East, I can say that uh, when we talk about Iran, uh, relation with the Middle East is another issue, the relation with the uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan. But at what I see related to Taliban, especially when when we see last year in a, an agreement or like a peace agreement with the US through Qatar. And now we see that Biden say he will, uh, he will uh, renew if he will continue this agreement or he, he stop it. We see that Taliban visit uh, Iran. So everybody knows uh, the involvement of uh, Iran also. So if it will be an agreement, American-Iranian agreement, uh, of course, Afghanistan will be a, like a space of, uh, or a, a, we can see a new positioning of uh, political party and also of the radical uh, organization, Taliban Qaeda. And also I can see the competition in Pakistan. It can be uh, between Turkish that as a part of NATO, they have, uh, it was a visit uh, from Erdogan to Pakistan and he make Islamabad uh, agreement uh, last month. So Islam, Islamabad agreement, it's also related to the new competition through Turkish in, uh, investment or policy through NATO uh, against uh, Chinese. And the Chinese, you, you know, uh, they profit from Pakistan as a corridor uh, for investment and for Silk Road project, this uh, belt and uh, road and belt. So uh, maybe it's not now, but as, as we can say, the American policy is like a domino effect. So they will start it from Middle East. Maybe the implication will be in, uh, in uh, Taiwan. So American Chinese competition is also as a part, but in Middle East, maybe it can be so easy and uh, we can see it directly few few months. Maybe in the in your region, Afghanistan, Pakistan, it will be like we will have to wait the domino to arrive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much. Now I want to give the floor to Dr. Bolt. Maybe you want to tell something. Murat. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you want to tell something. I have some problems with my connection. That's why, oh. yes, it's very slowly. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, we will have one topic uh, maybe at the end of this year about the Pakistan and Afghanistan situation when the US troops uh, go out from this country. And I think that the situation will change a lot in this region. And maybe we have uh, a real difficult situation in this, in this, in this country, in this region. Uh, as for uh, uh, as for uh, today's topic, I would say that uh, the situation in Lebanon is very difficult and we uh, met with our dear Dr. Imad Risk last year, last March, and we talked only about the coronavirus lockdown, yes? And we talk about the bright future of globalization and we didn't know really how the situ situation uh, could change, yes, and it, it, uh, this situation has changed a lot uh, after the explosion, yes, and we met 
the second time when we discuss uh, the situation in Lebanon after the explosion in the port and uh, it was a real disaster and we thanks to Dr. Imatrisk we uh, knew a lot of uh, things uh, that uh, not uh, announced during uh, not announced in the mass media and nowadays we today today we discuss uh, the situation in the region according to the uh, or connect, uh, connected with the uh, arabic spring and i think that uh, we talk uh, we have talked uh, talk about uh, the um, political uh, situation in the region but i think that we have a special uh, topic for next uh, uh, for next uh, our meeting and it will be interesting to discuss uh, the vaccine situation the race of a vaccine because uh, the Sput uh, the russian vaccine sputnik 5 uh, after after the um, after um, after this vaccine uh, became the popular uh, the situation and the, the power of Russia uh, has changed uh, on the political stage. And I think that if we uh, discuss the situation next time, it will be um, interesting. And maybe we, 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 uh, we will have the opportunity to, fi uh, to find a lot of um, uh, new, uh, new ways uh, to uh, how to connect with Lebanon, with uh, other countries in this region. Yes. It's my offer, for, for offer to you, doctor. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, dear colleagues, I think it's time to sum up because time about one and a half hour. It's really one of the maximum time of seminar. So first of all, I uh, if uh, Dr. Nikola gives authority, uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Mark, for giving us the help of the School of International Regional Studies. Uh, we meet with you, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the third time, and all three times. It's really amazing. It's, uh, now, it's interesting to listen to you, because I know exactly that you know a lot of things about these processes, uh, and every time it's really so amazing. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I have some <clears throat> problem with my voice. Uh, so I also want to thank our professor Vaklana for the moderator of this session, and Dr. Vishnubova and uh, our dean of the Faculty of World Economy and National Affairs, Professor Vaklana, for uh, giving us this opportunity to organize, to hold this beautiful event, which will popularize, in our opinion, the international regional study special area studies, because uh, as we discussed previous time with you, and as I remember, Dr. Mishnikova asked a question, what do you think about the future of globalization? We discussed that the world is becoming more regionalized, not globalized. Mm -hmm. It means that area studies will be so interesting, and it will be maybe the novelty of this uh, direction of science. So one more time, thank you so much. Thank you, our dear guest. Thank you for your interesting questions. Uh, for us, it's really great pleasure that different part of the world you can see some of the leaks from Afghanistan. I know that uh, dear friend Michel from Lebanon, our uh, professor today also from Lebanon. There are, like you know, pandemic give us a lot of problems, but on the other side, it makes us closer. Thank you for that. Thank you. So I think it's time to finish up. You have to tell Dr. Imad, thank, you, thank you very much for you. And thank I you. hope that we will meet uh, in Moscow, maybe in the nearest future. Yeah. You will After come to us to, to, yeah, to give a special lecture and seminars for our uh, colleagues and for our students. We are waiting for you, and I hope that everything will be okay as a person. Yes, as a, yes. As a, maybe not as a political or may not as a professor, as a person. I believe that everything will be okay, and we really have an opportunity to meet in Moscow here recent to see. I will organize it, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> as soon oh, as possible. Hope we will get our vaccine very soon, yeah. especially for the Russian. Right. 
for yes. the Russian patriots in Lebanon. Friend, I have got the first step, and uh, next week I will uh, I will get the second phase of uh, Sputnik, and I will talk you. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, we'll My, organize a meeting. Yeah. Well, My experience. Murad. Yes. Murad, yes. Yes. I, I would like to raise a, a, a point, please, as uh, as we have uh, our wives as Russian Federation members, we would like to ask. To get our portion excluded from the from the gover Lebanese government, please. <laughs> well, you know, if I have this authority, I will do it. Yes, you know, I always do my best. But as you know, I don't have any relations with this vaccine. But I think out of my yes, yes, Professor Vakanov, will help. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Ruska, thank you so much for your sober analysis of of the situation. We are very happy. Uh, to see you, to listen to you always, and uh, of course, uh, all of us, and uh, Mrs. Vishnikova, and Morand, and me, we are going to extend an invitation to the annual conference, which will be on the uh, 27th of April. Of April. So, uh, the questions which we, which we discuss will be the core, the core of the discussion, and uh, it will be possible also to see of, of the sites we discussed and ask them directly what they think. And so we're expecting that uh, this will be a very interesting discussion. Uh, and we're preparing for that. And we, are collaborate, we would like to collaborate with you while, while preparing our annual uh, meeting. Thank you so much for once more. It, it, it was a real intellectual pleasure to have you. Yeah, yeah. We, will, we, we will send the invite, invitation for you about our conference, the, which will be held on uh, the April, at the end of the April. At it April. will be 28th of April. It's our round table within the framework of April. We keep in touch and thank you. And sure, till this time, uh, take care about yourself and uh, we'll see you in good health, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank, thank you very much for joining us. And today. mysteries, don't settle all the questions before the April conference. <laughs> we, we, we must have some questions to discuss, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be cautious of, of, the, of the you know. Yes. <laughs> okay. I will finish. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your Thank you, Murad. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor.